Hello everyone. Welcome to Darius University, Course 1, Lesson 1, The Unholy Talent Tree. I'm here in Frostmourne's Cavern, where it all began for us Death Knights, and I plan to film these at other locations in the game that I think are neat. This will be a deep dive into the entire Unholy Talent Tree within the context of PvP. At some point I've given nearly everything a try, so hopefully you can find some of my insight and experiences valuable for your own gameplay and talent preferences. I plan to go into excruciating detail on each, so I will be making each of the trees a separate video, with plans for a beginner to advanced comprehensive lecture series on how I personally approach Wrath DK, as well as brief overviews of the more traditional DK playstyle. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. First up is Vicious Strikes. I would strongly recommend this talent. It is fairly self-explanatory and is well worth the points, even for specs which don't rely on or prioritize Scourge Strikes. For all ways to approach DK, Plague Strike is a mandatory ability. Next up, we have Virulence, another essential talent, both for significantly raising our spell hit to ensure none of our crucial spells miss on our enemies, especially like Draenei and Undead, who have an additional 2% chance to miss for shadow spells. The PvP spell hit cap is only 4%, but we will still need to reach 164 rating, hit rating to cap our melee hit. However, this talent still brings significant value versus specifically specific enemy talents and racials. It can also provi provide uh, cursory spell protection for our diseases and is always worth the talent points. Finally, we have Anticipation. This talent is clearly intended to help us tank in a PvE setting. In the past, I experimented rather cheekily with taking it to fight more Paladin matchups and twos with a Hunter. At the time, I also stacked an obnoxious amount of avoidance and stamina through PvE defense and tanking gear. Although it was surprisingly effective due to dodging and parrying his mortal strikes with some frequency, you won't ever be taking this talent in a serious capacity for PvP. Epidemic. This is one of the most ambiguous talent points, talents in our tree in terms of value. For the Darius playstyle, 0 out of 2 is best. It's also good to take a single point quite often, and on occasion you can also derive great benefit from 2 out of 2. I tend to favor a heavy reliance on single rune attacks and find on a pale horse to be a mandatory talent for DK. So since I am overriding my diseases frequently and gain significant utility in return, I skip this talent entirely in my personal build. If you are not taking on a pale horse, you will need to spend a talent point here to reach deeper into the tree and you will find the best overall value in Epidemic. A single point is the most value adding in my view as it gives you extra breathing room to use double rune attacks without being too egregious with the duration. Scourge strike offensively and death strike defensively with more frequency. Finally, you can take two out of two. This is especially obnoxious when stacked with Wandering Plague and while spreading death coils to protect your diseases for optimal spread pressure. It is really painful for your opponents when fighting against two DPS comps without sustain as they will rot considerably with just a single row of dots. Morbidity. This is simply an insane talent to take and essentially essential for the Unholy playstyle. It's fairly self-explanatory, and I consider it to be mandatory in PvP and extremely high value. Unholy Command. I consider this to be a mandatory talent. Without Death Crypt, DK has the lowest mobility of any class in the game. It's quite miserable to need to waddle at our enemies constantly, and grips always have insane utility overall, both offensively and defensively. Ravenous Dead, another mandatory talent. Besides the free strength, it's extremely useful when stacking, and when stacking with Glyph of the Ghoul, the stat value transfer of Stam and Strength to your Ghoul is formidable when properly understood. Outbreak, this one is fairly self-explanatory and self-evident, similar to Vicious Strikes. In some special builds without Scourge Strike, I play two out of three with it. But 99% of the time, you will be taking this talent, and I consider it to be generally mandatory and well worth the points. Necrosis. I have given this talent a shot many times in many contexts. I can say with certainty that talents which boost our auto attacks are a waste of points in the context of PvP. We simply don't have the constant uptime on our opponents necessary for it to really add value. If you absolutely must take an auto attack boosting talent, Blood Cake Blade is usually slightly higher value. Corpse Explosion. This talent is extremely difficult to use and master, but
but when used properly, it is also the most rewarding single talent point in the game outside of Gargoyle. This talent can have its own entire video dedicated to it, which I plan to make for the advanced course, but my simple recommendation is to use it and is get as much practice with it as you can. Mastering this is a huge skill differentiator between Death Knights, and even I still have much to learn to consider. On a Pale Horse. What a wonderful talent this is, as well as underrated. I could spend a great deal of time discussing this talent, but to keep it simple, it's really good. And from my point of view, significantly underappreciated by DKs in general. Every part of this talent brings considerable value, even the mount speed within a PvP context. context. Speed is the essence of warfare, Sun Tzu. Reaching your opponent faster when the gates open can easily determine the outcome of an arena match. We usually have a fear break available or, or dispel, but when we don't, or the fears are DR'd, that 20% reduction is consequential. Especially stacked with orc and, the temp and or the 10% stun meta, the benefits of 20% stun reduction, both defensively and offensively, offensively are obvious and self-evident. Blood Cake Blade. As I mentioned earlier, if you absolutely have the desire to squeeze out some extra auto attack damage from your talents, this is the better option. I have tried this talent in a variety of contexts, including with Shadowmourne. Long story short, it's underwhelming, unreliable, and generally in ineffective. The random op GCD damage is fairly useful within the context of PC PvP, and I believe the value per point is superior to Necrosis, otherwise I would avoid using this in PvP. Night of the Dead. This talent is mandatory and self-evident. It is also a prerequisite for a permanent ghoul. Take it. Unholy Blight. This is an interesting and generally mandatory talent. For Unholy, it is essential for both the extra damage and the disease protection. One thing to keep in mind is that Unholy Blight will not apply unless the Death Coil breaks through the enemy shield. If the damage is fully absorbed, you will not benefit from the damage, nor will it protect your diseases. I personally skip this talent in my Shadowfrost build because I simply don't need the disease protection, and unlike your diseases, Unholy Blight damage breaks hunger and cold. More on what I'm referencing here in a later video. Impurity. This talent is generally self-explanatory. Gives additional benefit from attack power to our spells, such as Icy Touch, Death Coil, Blood Boil, and Gargoyle. It does not affect our strikes, so I typically weigh it lower than Rage of Revendare, which is a more universal damage increase. It is quite strong, generally mandatory, but if you do need a steal point or two from somewhere to pick up extra talents, you can usually spare a few from Impurity. You will miss the damage though, so choose wisely if you do. Dirge. This talent is universally strong for both playstyles, but is especially essential for the Darius playstyle. Without Dirge, two Plague Strikes will give you 20 Runic Power, and a Scourge Strike merely gives 15. Dirge changes this to 30 Runic Power for two Plague Strikes, or 20 for a single Scourge. The benefits are obvious, especially when using my playstyle, which favors heavily utilization of single rune attacks to constantly pull Runic Power. I consider this to be a generally mandatory talent, although in some builds, perhaps those favoring disease duration and cleave damage, as well as double rune strikes, you can consider it to be optional. Desecration. What a wonderful talent this is. It's often overlooked in terms of how much value it really brings, but it is an excellent added benefit to the Darius playstyle, as both Scourge and Plague Strikes place it on the ground. It lasts quite a while, and you can really control a pillar with conscious placement of your desecrations as you are moving around them with your opponents. Perhaps it justifies its own advanced gameplay video at a later date. Absolutely mandatory talent, and crucial to the unholy gameplay no matter your approach. Magic Suppression gives a baseline damage reduction from magic by 6%, which is obviously significant. It also allows our AMS to reach 100% absorption, giving you an extremely powerful immunity to all the various sources of magic damage in the game, as well as abs absorbing more of it in order to punish your enemies with the runic power it generates. This is generally its mandatory talent, as it is also a prerequisite to AMZ, whose value as an ability is self-evident. However, you can steal points from both Magic Suppression and AMZ if you have advance notice that your enemy is a War Pal 
in twos, for example. However, the value of taking alternative talents very rarely outweighs the benefits of take benefits these talents bring, even when fighting a comp like War Pal, which still brings some considerable man magic damage that is quite effective and fatal when properly timed. I would recommend you always put, take this talent. Reaping. On its face, this talent appears to be reasonably strong, but the times that I have played with and around it, I found it to be underwhelming to the point of being a detriment. I feel this way due to it distracting you from your psychological timers on your rune CDs and creating a more unpredictable rune cooldown cycle. I personally have a such a uh, disdain for this talent that I wouldn't even take it for free since it incentivizes you to use blood strikes and pestilence over blood boils, which I believe is a terrible mistake when it comes to optimizing your damage and pressure as a DK. There are some potentially interesting interactions with blood tap returning two death runes that I experimented with on private servers and utilized, even putting a single point into reaping to achieve this effect. However, I have not fully explored the mechanics of this on Classic, and as I find little value overall in the talent for my playstyle, I simply have no interest in doing so. If you like playing with it and have fully mastered a playstyle including it, good for you, and I don't want to take anything away from you. Maybe you can prove me wrong. However, I cannot in good faith recommend anyone play this talent without an exceptionally strong justification for doing so. Master of Ghouls makes your ghoul pet permanent and unlocks Leap, Gnaw, Corpse Explosion as, as controlled options. Its value is self-evident and it's absolutely mandatory. Desolation, PvE DPS talent. I find very little PvP value in this. You'd be better off taking BCB to squeeze out an extra bit of damage if that's the goal. This is a terrible option for any PvP context. Anti-Magic Zone. This is a 75% magic AoE shield wall placed in an 8 yard bubble around the player. For one talent point, its value is self evident. Although it is possible to play without magic suppression and AMZ talents and invest the points elsewhere, I really don't recommend you do as a general rule. Improved Unholy Presence retains your move speed bonus outside of Unholy Presence, meaning you aren't snaring yourself by swapping to Frost. This talent also includes a 10% reduction in your rune CDs. This talent is mandatory, especially so for the Darius playstyle. This talent combined with a preference for single rune attacks allows me to almost always have a GCD available in order to maximize the benefit of the one second GCD from unhol Unholy Presence when both pooling runic power and bursting an enemy. The benefits are universal to any playstyle and the value is self-evident. Take this talent. Ghoul Frenzy. I really wanted this to be good. I tried several times with it with the best intentions, but it always ended up being more distracting than helpful. Our ghouls die easily through the hot regardless, and we're murdering them ourselves more than half the time. The potential to use an unholy rune while kiting to pick up 10 runic power is neat, but it uses the GCD, and that unholy rune could have been used on a D&D, AMZ, Bone Shield, or Plague Strike instead to greater impact. If I had a script to push this for me at the right moments, maybe it would be worthwhile. But my review is that it is merely a distraction and underwhelming, and the point is better spent else. This the point is better spent somewhere else, like impurity or on a pale horse instead. Crypt fever. This talent is fairly self-explanatory. Its value is self-evident, and it adds a third disease, which boosts the damage and healing of DK ability modifiers. For any normal and holy build, this is a mandatory talent. For my Shatterfrost build, I simply take one point in it so that the third disease is applied with my disease attacks, but I don't bother taking any more since I don't really rely on disease damage as Shatterfrost. Bone Shield. This is an insane talent. The bones can last for longer, but I believe they have a 3 second internal cooldown, meaning that this provides at least 9 seconds of 20% reduced damage reduction. It is also a very short 1 minute CD, and if used right, as, if used right as you enter the arena, it is already ready again by the time the gates open. Wonderful Utility is an unholy rune-based RP generator while kiting, as well as the obvious benefit of having the damage reduction, especially against dot classes who are not hitting you consistently enough with direct damage to fully clear the stacks. Ebon Plaguebringer. The value of this talent is insane and self-evident, not only providing a major damage boost to you overall, but also to your partners. This is extremely strong and mandatory for any serious unholy build. 
Scourge Strike. With the Darius playstyle, I tend to look down on Scourge Strike in general, but it still has considerable utility in specific situations and should not be ignored. The damage is quite significant when hitting Cloth. For a Paladin, I will lean on my magic attacks, corpse explosions, and death coils to put them in the grave, but Priests and other Wizards have real durability versus magic attacks, and we often lack the kind of burst damage from magic that Scourge Strike can achieve on unprotected Clothies or Warlock pets with big resistance values. This is a mandatory talent. I typically use it, use it sparingly on some opponents and near exclusively on others. It's always worth the point to have the option available. Wandering Plague. This is where the biggest divergence and most ambiguity between the Darius playstyle and what I consider traditional DK can be found. Wandering Plague is based on your melee crit, but it's also reduced by resilience. In Season 5, our melee crit is abysmal in the 18-22% to 22 range, and resilience values average out to 10% crit reduction. Three talent points for an 8-10% to 10 chance to do an extra 400 damage every 3 seconds which can bounce palm and other unintended effects is low value for me. Wandering Plague improves in, in its value significantly in later seasons as our baseline crit skyrockets while re resilience reduction values st stay relatively static. However, in Season 6 we gain Sigil of the Vengeful Heart, which boosts the value of our runic power for damage to an insane degree. So it's not really until Season 8 that Wandering Plague starts to truly become competitive in my view due to our raw attack power and crit rating values. Wandering Plague is a strong talent overall, however, and it's worth taking if you know how to play with and around it. Of all the optional damage increase talents, this one brings the most value overall, but requires adapting to a playstyle which takes into consideration in order to gain the full effect. Rage of Rivendare. The value of this talent is self-evident and obvious. You don't always need to take five points in it, but whatever you're trading for it usually isn't worth the trade. I value it over impurity, but sometimes you need to take an in, a point in impurity over it just to get deeper into the unholy tree. A trick to take into consideration when using it is to prioritize applying blood plague, blood plague first, since you will boost the damage of your frost fever by 23% between Evan Plaguebringer and Rage of Rivendare. This works the same for boosting your coil, icy touch, and blood boil damage significantly. Just something to keep in mind. The bonus expertise is quite handy as well since it's basically free. Summon Gargoyle. The value of this talent is self-evident and is our biggest pressure cooldown. Learning to play with and around Gargoyle can easily be its own video, and will be someday. If you are this deep into the Unholy Tree, there is no justification not to take guard. Mandatory talent and brilliantly effective when used properly, but can feel extremely impotent when used improperly or versus opponents who know how to play, who know how to play around it. Okay, that takes care of the entire Unholy Talent Tree. Lesson 2 will be our Frost Tree, which I hope to complete and release soon. In the meantime, you can always join my Discord, a link will be posted in the description, or you can follow me on Twitch at DariusDK underscore TV to reach me with any questions and learn more about how I approach the game. All my VODs are posted, freely available, and will never be behind a subscriber wall in case you miss my streams. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you at the next lesson.